everybody, Jamie here. Today I'm going to talk about the solar that's mounted on the side of my bus. This is one of the questions I'm most often asked in the comments of other videos where folks see these solar panels uh, mounted to the side and they're going, hey man, what's the deal with those side solar panels? We're thinking about putting some on our vehicle. Tell us a little bit about how you did it. And so I'm gonna cover this in a very concise way and just try to cover the high points in this to get you going. One of the reasons you might want to install solar on the side of your vehicle is maybe there's a lot of uh, different things on your roof and you don't have a lot of real estate up there for solar panels and you want to have a lot of solar to power your batteries, to power things like a refrigerator, a fan. In my case, I'm powering an air conditioning unit. I've got a dedicated refrigerator and a dedicated freezer, both low draw, so they're made to just be little power sippers. And I was even able to run a 250 watt heater when I was up in uh, Flagstaff during some of those cold days to take some of the pressure off of my uh, propane furnace. One of the most important things that you're gonna wanna address when mounting solar panels on the side of your vehicle is to make sure that they're secure. And the way I did that is I put five stainless steel uh, hinges across the top. I also had to bring these solar panels out from the, the side of my bus a little bit so they would fit vertically uh, when mounted. Otherwise they'd be kicking off, you know, they'd be you know, maybe eight inches off to the side. So I had to come out. So what did I use as a spacer? In my case, I used a composite piece of material that is used often for decking material. It's something that I bought at Home Depot. I cut it right down the middle and then mashed it back onto itself using some adhesive and then bolting through it. I had Dale helping me, uh, Chris helping me, and Steve. I started this project out in uh, Ehrenberg, Arizona at the beginning of the year and it's really not even finished yet because I haven't decided completely on how I'm going to keep these panels out when I'm parked someplace. They're gonna get a lot more power if I have them swung out. They'll still get power like they are on the side here. So if you've got them mounted permanently to the side, you can get away with it, but you're not maximizing your power. I have my panel secured when traveling with these latches. I'll put uh, links in the notes. They're Amazon affiliate links. You're welcome to source this stuff wherever you can. But uh, these are the latches that I use so my panels don't move when I'm driving. It's very important that these latches are mounted right at the edge here. Otherwise, they're not gonna get the, the lever action needed to clip in place. So let's go ahead and unhitch these, or unlatch these. Now let's swing these things out and I'll show you. Right now, I'm just using an extended uh, telescoping ladder to hold my panels out. It's doing a really good job. I framed this whole, these are two panels fastened together and I framed the whole thing in aluminum L channel, which I would recommend you do just to add some rigidity. I don't really wanna trust the frame to hold the weight of all these panels in all of the tests that they're gonna be going through, such as going down forest roads or even high speed interstates where you hit a big bump and it jolts. I put a ledge down here to hold the weight of it also. By swinging these panels out, I'm gonna pick up a whole lot more power. So let's do that. One of the things that's important is that we don't wanna swing them out enough that this corner is gonna, is gonna be a hazard to somebody that might be on foot walking by. You can see by the way I'm pulling these things out that they're definitely on that ledge which takes the weight off of the hinges. I recommend that you make sure that you've got that ledge down below tight holding the weight of the panels when they're fastened up against the side of your rig. I can look at the seam and know exactly where to put my ladder. Now I've got my panels raised and you can see it's better if that was a two person job. I'm gonna put a piece of duct tape across that so the ladder doesn't slip off in the rain or wind. Now we can see the panels are at a good angle where they're gonna get a lot of sun. 
I want to use that ladder for other things, so I don't want that to be something that's a permanent uh, fix. One of the things I could do is get a couple of inch and a quarter PVC pipes and cut them that size, and then mount some brackets up on the corners to hold the pipe in place and drive a little stake of rebar in the ground, put the pole on the stake where it's not going to move at the base, and then screw a little pipe in at the top and uh, that would hold them in place too and that would also be sturdy and safe. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Eventually, when I want to get back to where I can use my ladder on a regular basis, I might just go down to Home Depot and get a couple of these. This is just a, a screw plate for pipe, black pipe. I could mount it, say right here, and just leave it there. Unscrew the pipe when I'm not using it screw the pipe in and put my PVC on both of the ends and then again rebar in the bottom to hold it in place. So that's one option for you. But the sky is really the limit and it's just up to your imagination on what you think would work best. Let me show you the material that I used to fasten this and I'll get a ladder up there and show you exactly how I did it so you can get a closer look. This is it. This is decking material that I purchased from Home Depot. I purchased one piece of it cut it right down the center and then mashed it back onto itself with some adhesive caulk and then bolted it in. And I'll show you what it, that looks like up close too. You can see that I used butyl tape as a seal to keep moisture out of coming inside the bus. And I used a couple of self-tapping screws to hold it in place, but basically it's held in place with these uh, about five inch long, half inch thick uh, bolts and just uh, Dale and I drilled through the bus and bolted them on there and then came back and cut the the ends of them off also when I fastened the aluminum to the frame to frame it I used stainless steel screws with nylock bolts on the back side and I used a countersink bit so they would sit flush Let's take a look inside and I'll show you what it's like coming in. I've got the roof panels on one solar controller and the side panels on another one and that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. This is the solar controller that's coming in off of the side panels. It's a Victron Smart Solar which means it uh, links to Bluetooth which I highly recommend and it's a 150. 100 denotes how many volts this thing's designed to handle and 50 denotes the amount of amps. Those solar panels are 41 volt, 9.6 amps. So together, it's 82 volts going through there, pushing 9.6 amps. The solar controller up converts it, and the most I've ever seen on the app on my phone is about 42 or 43 amps coming through here, which means that I've got to have a wire that's a number six wire rated to handle up to 50 amps. I've also set uh, breakers up a 50 amp breaker on the battery side and a 50 amp breaker on the photovoltaic side. I don't need a 50 amp breaker on the photo photovoltaic side. I'm using number 10 wire, but I bought a couple of 50s and just went ahead and put it on there. If I was doing this for somebody else, it would be a 30 amp breaker. Here you can see where I used the bolt, the bolt head side on the inside with, I doubled up the washers and we just went, I don't know, maybe about a, a foot and change on every one of our contact points. When I engineer this stuff, I just do the best I can, figuring if I over-engineer it, I'll be on the safe side. And so far it's performed really well. I would highly recommend this type of a setup, although you could probably find a lot more that work just as well. If you're planning on mounting uh, solar panels to the side of an RV, RVs are not near as sturdy as a steel bus, and so you're gonna have to really reinforce those top hinge points or mount the whole thing in a way that's really secure and probably not be able to put it on a hinge. Just some ideas. Your imagination can reinforce that RV to where it can work just as good as this, but just right out of the factory, those RVs aren't gonna be as sturdy to mount as a hinge point. Those two panels are pretty heavy, and when you consider that I'm going down forest roads and hitting deep uh, potholes at high speeds on the interstate, we wanna make sure those things aren't going anywhere. All right, guys, there you have it. My 670 watt solar array added to my roof panels, and it makes a huge difference in being able to run electrical components in my bus. I hope this video helps you out. Thanks.